we are going to show you how to replace some what kind of bolts are these these are wedge bolts some old wedge bolts here at three eighths at sugarloaf near tahoe and uh, this is a real life situation being in the vertical world so you have to keep everything clipped to you and so we're going to show you as uh, we struggle here what we're gonna do. I built a neat little space net around my phone So if I dropped it, it doesn't go all the way to the ground So we're able to actually film a lot of neat things now in the climbing world uh, Now that I can film with my iPhone 11 since it's such a great camera now So we don't have too much wind over here and I'm gonna shoot him while he pulls this bolt out and reuses the hole ideally, so he can put in some bolts that the ASCA, the American Safe Climbing Association, donated. Uh, Greg Barnes mailed him a bag full of bolts for this project here at Sugarloaf. And Bobby is just a guy soaked on rebolting. He doesn't get paid to do this stuff, and it really helps when you donate to the ASCA so they can help fund projects like this. Because we just pulled out some quarter inch, no, three, what? Five sixteenth split shafts. Well, you can see in another episode at the top of this and how we wedged it out and replaced it with some stainless steel power bolts. If you want to check out bolting in general, we have the bolting Bible and you can see pretty much A to Z, everything there is to know about bolting. And in a few months, in about March, 2020, we are going to have the uh, New Testament done, which is how to remove bolts. And this is part of that series. So we're pretty excited about all the new stuff coming out, especially because we're at 300 bolt breaks deep into our Bolt Buster series. So uh, lots of stuff we're learning here, and it's all on the Bolting Bible in the link in the description below. Shall we get to work? Yeah. I don't think he wants to hang out more than... <laughs> I should just shut up. So we are here on the side of Sugarloaf, and we have an old homemade hanger um, attached um, to the rock with what I believe is a 3 8 wedge bolt. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, I believe this is from the early 90s um, and it's original with this route. So first we're going to take the hanger off. It's nice when it's, it's not, not, so not galled up, yeah. <laughs> so in a perfect world you'd had Wow, all right. You would have every tool on some sort of paracord or something, right? Uh, yeah, or in an easy access bag. Yep. All right, so that's off now. We're going to put the nut back on it briefly. Put this in our bag out of the way. This out of the way for now. And we're going to grab our trusty little hammer. And what we're doing right now is we're going to tap the bolt back into the hole, which um, disengages the sleeve from the cone, um, which will um, allow us to spin it. So you see how it went back in there pretty easily? Not all the way in though, right? Not all the way in, unless you can't get it out and need to patch it. But then you're hoping the hole is deep enough that it goes all the way in. Yeah. Otherwise, you're really kind of screwed. So this is the, the moment of truth. Um, see if these threads match, and they do. All nice. right. So we are um, going to do a little prep work with see how much water we can get into this hole. What does the water do? So the water... Um, uh, as the bolt spins, it, it makes dust, and then the water um, makes mud out of that and kind of creates a cutting solution in there, which allows the, the as you're spinning, the bolt it, sleeve is um, attached to the rock, and it's scoring. So the clip cannot the spin, yes. and you're spinning the bolt, uh -huh. making a groove. Mm -hmm. So when you do try to pull it out, the clip gets stuck on that groove yeah. and doesn't continue to just wedge out. Yes. Cool. All right, so let's get some water in there. So this is a lot easier um, when you're on top of a cliff and you can just pour it in. 
Um, some recommended methods are like a squirt bottle or a sriracha bottle. I don't know that I'm going to get any more than that in there. Yeah, it's pretty hard. You'd have yeah. to have some sort of a squeeze bottle to get it in there. Yeah. But and you get to spit some water in there. There's really <laughs> not room in there. You want you want to see that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that was fantastic. There you go. That's the best effort. Like, <laughs> you have a squeeze bottle in your in your face, so that worked out. Okay. So then you attach that, and that's just basically female on both sides, right? So what do you have? We need to use, we'll use a different method. Because that's just tightening it on there, yeah. trying to pull it out of the rock. Mm -hmm. What's I wrong, what's wrong with that? Um, you're engaging the coat around. Um, and you can't overpower it? It wouldn't come out? I mean, I don't want to find out and have it snap. I just was yeah, curious. I, I think it would, I think it would break. Because we really yeah. want to reuse this, the same hole. Yeah. We're going to spin it with my rotary hammer drill. Gotcha. What's the difference between that drill and this drill? Um, They're both spinning, right? They are both spinning. <laughs> um, this has a lot more torque than the other drill. Gotcha. Uh, the other drill is definitely more focused on chiseling the mm. rock or masonry. This is what a mechanic would use to take off tires. Okay, so this is a different tool. Yeah, so this is um, a coupler nut that it's the same thing, but on an adapter, right? Yeah, there there is a um, thread adapter in here, and then this um, is it an SDS adapter okay. that screws into the other side. Yeah, hammer drills have SDS bits, which is um, the, has these grooves here. Rotary hammer drill. Rotary hammer. So it has those grooves so it doesn't just fall out when it's smashing. And All right, and with your rotary hammer drill, you set it to spin and not... Drill. All right. Spin the right way. There we go. There we go. So we're going to take it off real quick. And sometimes the thread adapter stays on. Oh, because that's for half inch? Yeah. And that's a 3 8 adapter. It did seem to spin a bit. Yeah, so we're going to put some more water in there. Um, and then try it again. Adding water. The minimalist way. <laughs> Cross thread it though, right? Nice. So there's not enough threads exposed, and so it's trying to pull the threads are trying to pull the bolt out, which is engaging the cone on the other side. Careful your adapter. So we're going to take it off and try again. So keep tapping it in, add water, keep spinning it. Yeah, I never thought about spinning it, pulling it out before. That makes sense. Yeah. It's really nice to see that this process isn't as smooth as, uh, as you might think it might be. It's nice to see us struggle a bit so you know what it's like in a real life scenario. Um, but we're just going to keep working at it and we'll get this bolt out and uh, we'll show you how we put in our other power bolts that were donated by the ASCA.
Okay, tap it in, but not too far. Yeah, that's good. And then you just, uh, you're good on water for now, right? Oh, no, I'm gonna add some more. Okay. The real crux of this whole operation is not dropping stuff down on the people below you. Yeah, luckily we're only less, we're less than 100 feet from the ground. But if we were like way up on El Cap, <laughs> that's awesome. Actually worked pretty good, considering. Well, that makes me, my, me sad for my drill. So this is a bolt puller tool. Um, we didn't have much success with spinning this. Um, there's not enough threads exposed to um, hit the stop in the back of my coupler nut. So it is trying to pull oh, the it's... nut out. The threads going into the coupler nut are trying to pull the nut out, which... Um, if that was shallower, yeah, it could... If that was shallower. It could... Well, okay. Um, so basically it's just engaging the wedge function. So what we're going to try to do is see if we can pull it out without spinning it. Let's see what happens. Oh. Ooh, hold on. Tell us about this tool. This thing looks fancy. So this is a bolt pulling tool um, based on a design um, pioneered by a guy named Greg German out in Colorado. Uh, this is a much fancier CNC uh, version made by a guy in Mountain Project who goes under the name Cletus. Okay. Um, and it basically, you're just spinning this around this screw yeah, and, and it sucks up that until you pull the bolt out. Or okay. The or the bolt breaks. So this is the same type of coupler nut. Um, this has the same threads on the end of this as on the end of the adapter. For okay. Drill. So you could just use one. For everything. For everything. Or you could bring extras in case you dropped something. Yeah. <laughs> I have dropped a couple into the river down at CRG. You dropped a cup coupler in a... A couple of couplers. A couple of couplers. All right. So it sucks that up into it. And then... How, how much muscles do you have to... Just a little? All the magic's happening inside. Snap! <laughs> <laughs> so... You're engaging the wedge and that's why that's hard. Mm -hmm. Otherwise the wedge would be sliding out yep. if we were able to score the bolt. Yeah. Um, I think if I push anymore, I'm gonna break it. Break it. I'm feeling it at that point. Do you wanna attach it with a sling? Got a pretty good grip on it. Okay. I've pulled these, I've pulled wedge bolts out without scoring them. Uh, that's something in the bolt moving. Oh, cool. Maybe that's uh, yeah. shifting. So, I mean, I've experienced wedge bolts coming out without breaking. Um, you were but using bigger ones, like 5.8, right? They were half inch half wedge inch. bolts. And. I used similar wedge wedge technology. This is pretty cool. Looks like you're really yarding on it though. Like yeah. you're not you're not a small guy. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm watching my, my threads here. Yep. And all of that popping is going from on the down here. Nothing's jumping or anything here. Yeah, that would suck. I mean, pretty cool if this just skip the scoring. <laughs> you never have to work this hard with the scoring. Yeah, if it's scored. Um, that's good to know. You want to take it off and, and check real quick? Or just keep going? Just keep going. It'll, it'll, like, you don't have to go much further before. Yeah. <laughs> See, exactly. There you go. Oh, fuck yeah. Success. Neato. Huh. You got the water in there. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. So that's the hole. 
we're gonna drill it out a little bit bigger so we can put our half inch power bolt stainless steel this time and that will last how long do you think that'll last <laughs> i mean more than 20 years yeah i've removed uh bolts that were put in about 30 years ago with a stainless hanger and the only in this area and the only effect was the plated steel bolt had rusted and stained the stainless just a little bit yeah but the stainless yeah okay so it should last our full lifetime yep. um I mean, if you're near the ocean, you got to put in uh, titanium or like areas that have a lot of corrosion. But out here, I mean, you do have wet winters, but it's not um, like a salty, corrosive environment. So yeah. stainless and PLX should be uh, super good enough. Super good enough. <laughs> so our next step is to drill out the hole, enlarge the hole for our uh, new bolt. Is, does your drill bit get stuck if you're drilling a smaller hole? Um, if they're too close in diameter, it might. Um, modern drill bits with this carbide tip are less acceptable to that. Okay. Uh, we will see in a moment. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> you guess that on film. <laughs> I am going to make sure I edit that into the video. <laughs> my feet completely slipped and I just smashed my phone against the rock with my chest. Uh, being Jimmy Chin is hard. Oh, Jimmy Chinning is hard. Jimmy Chin would feel more like this, though. <laughs> and you would, like, exhale <sighs> very serious. We'll do a whole spoof on uh, Free Solo later. So you might ask, uh, why can't you just re you reuse this hole? You just pulled the bolt out of it. Mm. Um, with You're worried about... Um, it, it's a, if you're trying to put a 3 8 bolt back in a 3 8 hole, that other bolt has been in there. As you pulled it out, it may have done damage to the hole, so your new bolt might not engage as well. Okay, do, so you do want to upgrade size, uh, or do you just yes. want to drill a fresh 3 8 No, you'd want to upgrade the size. Okay, so it's good we use half inch. Yeah. Okay. How's that? Looks straight. <laughs> Straight's good. So, between spinning and <laughs> drilling, you want to switch back to the hammer drill. Button. You won't get very far otherwise. Nice. Um, Better to have it a little too long than too yeah. shallow. So I, I put these a little bit too long, but... If you have my, a powers bolt too shallow, yeah, show so, us on the drill bit. So my, my goal is to get to the thread. That's kind of my measuring. Um, That's what those look like. Yeah. And you went to about right here. Uh, did I? Yep. Okay. I think so. Yeah. So, yeah, if you put that in something that's too shallow, <laughs> you're going to be hating life. <laughs> so after you drill it, just like for most bolts, you need to clean out the hole. Even with tightened concrete screws, um, you want to get the you dust, get out, the dust out. Yeah. Yeah. But this is most important for glue-ins, but it's also important for mechanical bolts. Yeah. Two brushes and two blows are probably good, right? Yeah. With glue, it's um, recommended to do three or four times. What, what kind of... Uh, let me see the air can. Duster. Ozone safe. This is pretty neat. How many bolts can you get out of that? Um, like the, of what you're doing right now? Half inch. Uh, 25 or 30 at least. Oh, wow. That's yeah. totally worth bringing. Yeah. Doesn't seem too heavy to carry air. Nope. <laughs> it's nice to have that bag on you. Yeah. So these bolts were in the bag, but then I couldn't find anything in the bag. <laughs> okay. So this is the, the new bolt. Um, before we put it in, um, we want to just make sure it's pretty snug. Nothing's loose here, um, but we don't want this cone starting to engage into the sleeve yet. Because that is what makes these stay in the rock. Yeah. What's nice is these power bolts, make sure you use stainless steel. You can see here it says SS304. Um, these don't rise like uh, 
wedge bolts do. The tighter you make a wedge bolt, the higher this part is sticking out. Um, it's nice when these stay flush because you get a little bit more working room when you stick carabiners inside of the hanger. These are uh, powder coated? You know, I'm not sure. They, I think they're powder coated. They look powder coated. Um, and they're meant to camouflage and not be so shiny on the rock. Um, but they are a stainless steel hanger nonetheless. So. And these have some ASCA branding on there. And then on the top, underneath the powder coating, it says Enox, which is another word for stainless. That's, I learned, has a French derivative. All right, so let's get it started in the hole. All right, and then we can tap a little bit more aggressively. Right, before we get it all the way snug, um, we want to kind of orient it in the correct way. Right behind that washer, there's a little arrow pointing straight up. It's behind the washer, though. Behind the washer. That's not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty stoked this uh, worked out. Yeah. Almost lost hope there, Bobby. <laughs> So um, these bolts take, I think 20, 25, something, something like that, torque pounds. And if you're using a little wrench, it, that's uh, the equivalent of like two grunts. <laughs> you, you gotta pull pretty hard. When we used a torque wrench, we were shocked how much. Yeah. 25 torque pounds. Now, you'd whip on that? Oh, totally. Cool, maybe, uh, maybe we'll whip for science later on. <laughs> um, we're gonna go down and replace Oh, I see one right there. Yep. All right, let's go do the next one, see if it spins. Okay, so we got some fancy redirects going on and we are at our next bolt. So go for it, Bobby. So this is another um, homemade hanger with a rusty 3.8 wedge bolt. So let's see if we can get this one to spin. Yeah, hopefully. And nice. You're lucky when it's not so rusty that the nut and the bolt are one piece. Why don't you just put it on first and not pound any in? Because that way you might get it to engage. Is that an option? So the cone is engaged right now. So I'm wanting to disengage the, um, the sleeve around the cone. Okay. Which I do by tapping it back just a little bit. Nice. I guess it'll suck back out if you if it wants. Yeah. If I make a joke, will you spit out your water? <laughs> if I don't make a joke, will you spit out your water? <laughs> if it's funny enough, will it come out of your nose onto the bolt? <laughs> what did the glue in say to the mechanical bolt? If I get this going fast enough, can I hear you? <laughs> ah, nuts. <laughs> That's a bad one. <laughs> How long have you been working on that one? I didn't put any effort into it. Ooh. Oh, it's actually doing what it's supposed to. So we're going to take it off real quick and um, put some more water in there. But these bolts are camouflaged. We should leave them in. <laughs> All right, spin in some more. So a trick is to um, move it in and out, which sloshes the slurry of dust and water um, over the parts. Okay. Um, and that grit um, allows the cone to cut into the bolt a little bit better. Do one more cycle. Slashing your slurry. Oh, you do want to do more. You really want to spin the fuck out of this. Yeah. Got it. Because you're you're cutting into metal. Yeah, got it. With your liquid sandpaper. Yeah. 
All right, now we're going to try to pull it out with this fancy tool. So we thread that on there. Where can people get something like this? So this one is pretty much made to order. Um, there's a gentleman on Mountain Project, goes by the name of Cleese, we he's from Colorado somewhere, uh, that has these machined. Okay. Um, we'll put his information in and in the description. Yeah. Also, Greg German has a lot of resources on Mountain Project as well as YouTube on how to make your own. Okay. I wasn't feeling technologically inclined enough when I uh, first started this uh, to want to attempt that. Yeah, it's much nicer if you just buy these things. Um, it's not, nothing's super complicated on them. It's just kind of a bitch to get every part to work together. Um, I saw a, a video of Access Fund had a, a machine similar to this. Yeah. You just basically got something that can hit the rock and stop push against the rock and a screw that's pulling it out. I'm worried that I don't have this threaded in enough. There we go. Okay, yeah, it's at the stop. Cool. Oh, that's butter. Oh, that's way better than the last bolt. Oh, damn. Uh, that's impressive. So do we see any scoring going on here? It would be underneath there. Yeah, there you go. There's fresh metal right there. Oh, sick. Okay. Yeah, there is. We showed you the how not to version first. <laughs> uh, I should clean off uh, the lenses there. There we go. So another way to check your bolt depth is using your brush. So notice we were right at the edge of the nylon strands there. Plenty of room. Yeah. I have a feeling it'd be hard to pull that out before you even torque on it. <laughs> but, we tested that. Did we? Yeah. Oh, the, no torque? Uh, the plate of steel half inch ones. Gotcha. Yeah. It was weaker, but it was still like it was 18 a lot. kilo -nooms. Yeah. Yeah, check out our Bolt Buster uh, videos. We're uh, releasing our brake test videos all the time. So I think my drill bit is um, time to get a new one worked just fine for the last one but this one it's too tight you think yeah it's too tight yeah you had to hit it in pretty hard did you just knuckle yourself yes. <laughs> oh god <laughs> so you literally have skin in the game mm. I have less skin you have less skin in the game <laughs>